When contractors market against each other, important facts can get overlooked. In this video, we'll provide an accurate look at how polyurethane compares to mud jacking in terms of water resistance, health and safety, injection hole size, as well as strength and cost. For a long-lasting repair, concrete lifting materials should be water resistant. Let's look at the difference between polyurethane and mud. A customer had a little problem with a slab that he hired a local mud jacking company to fix. The interesting thing that I saw about this was all of their material pumped out the front of this slab, raising this back edge way too far. The material, as you can see, is not real strong. We're gonna go ahead and get a sample of this and we're gonna take it back to our shop and do some testing. Mud jacking companies talk very highly of their material and speak very poorly in regards to polyurethane. So our, our theory is to work on facts, not opinions, and to uh, show you guys something that actually makes sense when it comes to concrete raising. So we hope you find this very interesting. Erosion is one of the top reasons concrete drops or sinks. So what's the best material to raise concrete and help prevent it from dropping again? Polyurethane or mud jacking mud? In a controlled environment, we're going to test the effect of water erosion on equal parts of polyurethane and mud jacking mud. Using mud jacking material collected from the mud jacker's work site, we formed a cube and allowed it to fully dry for maximum strength. Mud jacking mud takes 24 to 48 hours to fully cure. To ensure a fair comparison, we selected a same sized cube of fully cured polyurethane. Polyurethane takes about a half an hour to cure. We have here two water filter housings filled with sand and pea gravel. Now we'll add the cube of polyurethane to one housing and the cube of mud jacking mud to the other. Next, we'll test the water erosion effects on both materials at the same time under the same conditions by adding water. Since leveling materials are injected underneath concrete, we've placed a piece of concrete on top of each cube of material. This will simulate a realistic environment for testing. The filter housings have been connected to a common water supply. Now we'll turn on the water and film the effects water has on polyurethane and mud jacking mud. We'll be switching to a time lapse mode to speed things up a bit. Okay, now we're going to take these filters apart and take a look at what's left inside. This filter has the polyurethane and you can see it is fine. It is the same condition it was before we started this test. Now for the mud. As you can see, the mud degraded and it plugged up all of the gravel and sand beneath it, not allowing any water drainage at all. That's what's left of our mud sample. There's just nothing left of it. Material strength is an important consideration. Get the facts in writing before you make your choice. 
The strength of polyurethane has been proven in laboratory tests and it is also reflected on product data sheets. Because of polyurethane's sheer strength and water resistancy, it is relied on to repair tollways and interstates. Highways are heavily trafficked with large vehicles and require a superior weight-bearing product. Polyurethane is so strong that it is the only repair product accepted on certain highway projects. Mudjacking bids aren't even accepted. The Illinois Tollway wrote bid specifications requiring the use of polyurethane for repairing its settled highways. Right here in Chicagoland, areas within a 42-mile section of I-294 were raised up to 5 inches using polyurethane. We wanted to provide facts on the strength of mudjacking mud, but were unable to find any consistent data. Mudjacking mud varies from mudjacker to mudjacker. Each mudjacking contractor seems to have a different description of their mud. They also claim their equipment is somehow special from that of their competitors. We couldn't find any data to support this. In fact, the only data we could find on the consistency of mudjacking mud is that it isn't consistent at all. After your concrete has been raised, it shouldn't look like Swiss cheese. Holes should be minimal in terms of placement and size. Let's review the difference between mudjacking and polyjacking injection holes. Here's a drawing that graphically represents the most common difference in hole size between polyurethane and mudjacking, but it's just that, a drawing. So a better way of understanding the difference between the two is to look at what's really going on. Here is an actual mud jacking nozzle alongside a polyurethane injection port. This mud jacking nozzle requires an inch and five eighths hole about the size of a golf ball. The polyurethane injection port only needs a five eighths inch hole about the size of a dime. For mud jacking, the operator will stand on the injector to hold it down with their foot and pull on an attached rod to keep it wedged in there. There is no mechanical connection here. It's dependent upon the operator's ability to physically hold it down in the hole. Polyurethane is completely different. The injection gun attaches to the port by either a quick connect swivel fitting or a simple clamping mechanism, either of which provide a secure, sealed connection up to 10,000 pounds per square inch. The mud jacking nozzle is nearly seven times the surface area than an injection port for polyurethane. So what do actual mud jacking holes look like? Here are some pictures we took at estimates where mud jacked concrete had dropped again. It's easy to see that large patches are very noticeable, but more importantly, they run a much higher risk of failing. The large patches can crack, fall out, and leave big gaping holes. We've even seen weeds growing out of them. Here are a few photos of concrete that have been raised with polyurethane. The injection sites are hardly noticeable, and being so small, have little to no risk of failing in the future. Mudjacking mud is generally considered to be safe. Now, let's take a look at the facts regarding polyurethane foam. Some companies resort to scare tactics in a desperate attempt to trick potential customers into selecting mudjacking. This has resulted in numerous false claims. Here are some facts regarding how polyurethane affects personal health, safety, and the environment. In the search for accurate and truthful data, we decided to look at a manufacturer's safety data sheets. Polyurethane foam has no hazardous components and is not listed as a carcinogen. Ecologically, it is not a marine pollutant and shows no mobility in soils. Disposal is permitted in any municipal landfill accepting standard construction and demolition debris. Polyurethane is not regulated by the Department of Transportation. Polyurethane foam is not considered hazardous per OSHA 29 CFR 1910.1200. It is a well-known fact that polyurethane foam is chemically inert and will not leach into groundwater. Polyurethane is a common everyday material found in furniture, 
carpet cushions, bedding, packaging, insulation, construction sealants, surfboards, watch bands, and thousands of other products, including medical devices. Price is always a factor when selecting a repair option. We'll reveal useful information to help you navigate this tricky landscape. Did you know raising concrete with polyurethane is often less expensive than mudjacking? Our polyjacking quotes underbid mudjacking on a regular basis. A mudjacker might tell you polyjacking is too expensive. Polyurethane is, after all, a far superior product, and the material itself does cost more than a mudjacker mud. However, the polyurethane delivery system is far more efficient and sophisticated when compared to the system that mudjackers use. Advancements in polyurethane technology have created a better product, one with higher efficiency and reduced labor costs. These substantial cost savings are then passed on to our customers and are one of the reasons why we regularly underbid the competition. If you receive a polyjacking quote that is significantly higher than mudjacking quote, look into the provider of the service. Is the provider an actual concrete raising specialist like Acme Concrete? Or is this a company who simply offers polyjacking as an add-on service, like a waterproofing or a concrete installation company? A waterproofing company who offers polyjacking as an add-on service will undoubtedly sell concrete raising services at an inflated rate. It would be similar to buying a gallon of milk at a convenience store. For the best service at the greatest value, don't sell for anything less than a company whose primary focus is polyurethane concrete raising. We've worked hard to present facts regarding how polyurethane concrete raising compares to mudjacking. Here's a quick summary of our findings. So how does polyurethane compare to mudjacking? Let's review the facts. We conducted a demonstration showing how mudjacking mud and polyurethane hold up to water. During our demonstration, we found that mudjacking mud doesn't hold up at all. The mud is just that. It's mud. And mud washes away quickly when introduced to water. Mudjacking mud is not water resistant. Polyurethane, on the other hand, is water resistant and will not erode like mud. Water will not penetrate or break down polyurethane. What about material strength? Polyurethane has superior weight-bearing strength. The material is so strong that it's the only product required for certain highway projects, projects that won't even accept mudjacking bids. Mudjacking mud varies from contractor to contractor. We couldn't find any consistent data on what makes up mudjacking mud. Each contractor seems to mix up their own slurry, and those slurries can change from job to job. With mud, you don't really know what's being injected under your concrete. Now let's talk about hole size. Polyurethane holes are much smaller than that of mudjacking holes. They're about the size of a dime. Holes for mudjacking are about six times the surface area of polyurethane holes. Mudjacking holes are large and sloppy material is pumped in using a loose fitting pipe often held down by a mudjacker's foot. The injection process for polyurethane is neat and efficient. Polyurethane is injected through a tightly sealed injection port carefully placed into your concrete. The injection port helps deliver the polyurethane quickly, efficiently, and under a very controlled delivery system. There is no messy slurry or loose fitting pipe like in mudjacking. Injection sites are hardly noticeable. Mudjacking leaves large, gaping holes which are more likely to crack and fail over time. Now, polyurethane is found in thousands of common household products like furniture, bedding, packing material, even in medical devices. Chances are you're sitting on polyurethane at this very moment. When reviewed, we found that material data sheets show polyurethane poses no risks to individuals or the environment. Now for cost. The polyurethane material itself is more expensive than mud.
However, raising concrete with polyurethane is as affordable, if not cheaper, than that of hiring a mudjacker. With the sophisticated polyurethane delivery system, labor and delivery costs are minimal, allowing us to pass that savings on to our customers. Polyurethane quotes often cost less than mudjacking quotes. Don't settle for mudjacking. We recommend a polyurethane specialist for the best product and value for your money. Acme succeeds where concrete fails. So what about that failed mudjacking job? As shown earlier, a mudjacker tried to fix this customer's stoop. Their mudjacking material literally pumped out the front. Acme Concrete properly fixed the stoop using long-lasting polyurethane. We use commercial-grade polyurethane on every job we do. Acme succeeds where concrete fails.